autumn 2017. I contacted a theater actor friend of mine living in Batman. He had been organizing help to Yazidi fleeing northern Iraq in 2014, and I had personally also been involved in these efforts. Since then, between six eight thousand Yazidi refugees fleeing from ISIS fighters in the Sinjar region of northern Iraq have been relocated to Batman. Many Yazidi who were exposed to cruelties and oppression by ISIS and refused to convert were executed. Women and girls were kidnapped, raped or sold as slaves. Those who managed to escape from this oppression and genocide scattered all around the world. The municipality of Batman, which was then held by HDP, provided for all the needs of the incoming wave of refugees there. Most of those who escaped the cruelty of ISIS continued their way to other countries. 200 people were placed into tents and ruined houses of Beshiri an old Yazidi village in Batman. Those who stayed were the poorest ones. July 2016. The government removed mayors who were members of HDP from power under decisions taken within the scope of the emergency state that was declared after the failed coup attempt of 2016. I was informed that all the help provided for Yazidi was stopped and banned. I wanted to do something meaningful upon what I learned. I called my friend to ask if he would like to organize an outrage project for the remaining Yazidi. His answer was yes. I took a plane to Batman. We visited the places where Yazidi stayed and we contacted them to understand their situation better. The main focus of the project was the children who were growing up peevish and hopeless. In the area, there was an abandoned school building. It was a four-walled structure with neither doors nor windows. Our aim was to help the children overcome their traumas as much as we could. We wanted to achieve that by painting lessons and theater plays. <laughs> We embarked on a quest to find a teacher who would accompany the children three, four times a week. I covered all the expenses. The school was painted, windows were installed, a whiteboard and heaters were supplied. <laughs> We kept facing the needs of families as we took care of the children and the school. Wooden pallets were placed under the children's families' tents in order to spend a warmer winter. 
They had no firewood or warm clothes for the winter, and they were running out of food. One of the kids needed a surgical operation within the shortest time. We met the vital and basic needs of the families with the help of funds we raised over social media. Getting donations for Yazidi became quite difficult and dangerous upon the declaration of Tayyip Erdogan, claiming that Yazidi collaborated with the terrorist organization PKK. Those who helped the refugees started to be seen as suspects. We were determined to go on despite that. On the other hand, it was getting difficult to find teachers who would keep partaking in the project. Most of them were afraid of being part of it. Therefore, we decided to take over the care of the children and stay with them ourselves. The way these little monsters turned into sweet and smiling children in such a brief time surprised us.
پنگه و پنگه هبو تنبو بزنه که دو کار کن وی هبون روشه که بزن اجه کار کن خواهد دو بیجه از هرم در و بچیرم برای شیر تکه به گوهان من و هنجی بکار بن تیر گوهان من بمشن لی حتا که از ورم درش کسی را به نکن ها اما که از ورم از جوره بیسترانی بیشم The Turkish state threatened the refugees with the deportation a few times. This is why the families usually felt tense. To avoid jeopardizing ourselves and the refugees, I decided to present our project to authorities. Also, I decided to personally meet the local Turkish administrators to guarantee our position and safety. They asked for a list of names of the people in the charge of project and ensured me of our safety. <laughs> We worked on the project until the autumn of 2017. For the duration of an entire year, we gave lessons regularly to the children three times a week. We took care of them and accompanied them. In the same period, the Minister of National Education decided to assign three class teachers to teach kids Turkish and life sciences. Paint and whitewash of the school walls were done, city water got connected, and the restrooms became operational. Following the developments, the gendarmerie came to school. They didn't let us in, asserting that they didn't know us. This is how the Batman project came to an end. I tried to reach the regional administration and the governorate to express that we had met before. But unfortunately, I failed. They neither want to see us, 
nor can they tolerate our presence there. It seems that our project was an insignificant attempt in the eyes of the state. According to those who hold the power of the state, investing in people, doing something meaningful, helping humanity must have another motivation other than simple humanness. <laughs> They were right. Our desire was to eliminate and save these children from the darkness of a cursed regime. Can 